Welcome to our home, guys. Today I want to bring a subject of cast iron. As you know, I have did the wall and we really like to cook on cast iron. It's the only thing we're really cook on, mostly. What I want to talk to you today about is taking an old one and cleaning it. Kind of hard to see but you can see this one here i've had this one for a lot of years and it's gotten built up on the bottom so i'm going to try to strip that bottom there's uh several ways to do it you can take a wire brush to it and scrape it and clean it that way and get most of it off you can uh if it was rust soak it in vinegar and uh get it off that way that's one of the good things about cast iron if you can sign one in a garage sale if it's got covered with rust some people think they're no good if you can get it cheap get it get you some white vinegar let's soak in it two or three or four days take steel wool work it out and it'll take all that off put it in an oven warm it up real hot clean it and then you start the seasoning stick around to the end and i'll show you how to do the seasoning what I'm going to do today is, is uh, burn it off. There's several ways to do it. You can put it in your oven and put it on self-clean and do it. The downfall on that is, is it ends up time, some of those times putting a lot of smoke in your house. If you've got a fire pit, you can get a good hot fire going. Put it right in there, burn it off. I have a pellet grill, so I'm going to put it on a pellet grill and uh, burn all that off. At the same time, it'll end up burning my a lot of my season is on the inside of this, so I'll be starting from scratch. Just re-season it back to cook on. Alright guys, we're out here at the pellet grill. And with my pellet grill, I can set it at a certain temperature, and the highest one is 500. That's where I'm going to set it at. I'm just going to set this right there on it, and I'll keep an eye on it. It may take an hour, may take a little longer. It is here in December, so it may take a little longer. So I'm going to bring you in closer, guys. So I'll set that right in there, right on top of that. I'm going to close my lid back up, try to keep as much heat in that thing. And we'll check on it off and on and see how long it takes. All right, guys. It's been about an hour. It's starting to get dark on me. You can kind of see how it's starting to make it a little, that grease, the hard stuff kind of crackle up. It's burning it off. Let's turn this over and see what the bottom looks like. Oh yeah. As you can see, it's starting to break it up real good. I've got to use my flashlight to put enough light. didn't have any still wool right now at the house. I thought I did. And I'm going to take and scrape the whole bottom of this thing and then I'm going to put it back on and let it keep going. As fast as it's going, it should be done in a little while. Here it is. I put it in there, let it go for about an hour and 45 minutes got dark on me so I went ahead and I've got a wire wheel that I put on my drill and I knock because what it does is it'll burn all this if I can get close enough for you guys you kind of see it takes and burns that seasoning and you got to grind it off you'll never get 100% of it off but uh, you can get 99% of it clean it up. At least now I can see the bottom of my pan again. The next step is I'll take and actually wash this real heavy a uh, good five or six times trying to get all that off of there. As you can see it's still coming off on my hands. And then I'll come back and actually start the seasoning. And I'll bring you in on the seasoning. I don't think you want to bore you with the washing. Alright, now I'm going to get towards the seasoning part of this. I've washed it. I'm going to get it in here and get some heat on it. I dried it by hand, but I want some heat in here because I want to get cast iron has a porous cells in it. 
and it'll soak up stuff. That's how come you can season it and make it non-stick. The oil gets in there and makes a surface that's non-stick. So right now, even though I've dried it by hand, the uh, there's still water in this metal. So I've got it on medium, and I'm gonna let it heat up. The uh, You wanna use an oil that is a high temp oil. Uh, old timers, my grandfather and grandmother and all them, they used lard and bacon grease, which is really good. I'm going to try something a little different this time. It's 100% uh, grapeseed oil. It's a high heat cooking. It's supposed to go real high. So I'll put a couple layers of that, but I am still going to come back with my trident tube bacon grease on top of it to finish it out. So I'm going to let this warm up. When it gets up to the warm temperature, then I'll take and put some oil on it warm it up again kind of get it worked in there let it sit down and cool down i'm going to do that about three to four times and dry the exo oil each time off of it so i'll get back to you whenever this is ready for oil all right it's gotten up warm i can feel it I put my hand there for a few minutes but then it starts getting real warm I'm going to turn that off, grab me a paper towel, I'm going to put a little bit of scrape seed oil in there, so I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to start spreading this oil. And you want to spread it all around it the edges the handle and even the bottom that's why my bottom was a little bit covered as i had too much on it what you're doing here is putting a a layer of oil that's almost like a a hard rock once it gets nice and dried that allows it to be non-stick and also allows it not to rest so and I'm gonna let it sit for a while and let it kind of cool off guys before we get into the last layer of oil I plan on putting on this Pam I'd like to ask you guys to uh, leave comments for us you know tell us uh, what you like about this video we want to hear from you guys and if you're getting value out of this, I'd ask you to please reach down there and hit that subscribe button and then hit that big old thumbs up for the like, please. Share our videos. Share them to your friends and family. Some people that might not know about this or some people might have gotten some cost iron gift to them. Maybe then they can figure out, okay, this is how you take care of it and they can start using it. Okay, I have put in three coats on this. I'm getting ready to do my last one. Thought I'd go back and show you again just real quickly how I do it. Now, you can see this one. I've, I've done it and I've let it sit here for a while. And... Uh, a lot of that oil has soaked in and the oil that's on top is left and all I'm going to do is take and wipe it dry with a towel and this pan now is ready to use uh, my wife's now made it her favorite pan so she cooks about everything you can imagine in there all right this is the last layer I put on the next she it's got that nice sheen shine to it thought I'd go over some cleaning tips that I have that I do so when we get done cooking in our cast iron sometimes there'll be a little bit of food that sticks but it's not really that much once you get a good season on here and it's real easy to clean so if you're cooking something that has ability to stick to almost anything and it's 
got a few pieces clunked up in there while it's still hot if you can put just a little bit of water in there and come in and rub and clean it'll come up dump it out real quick and then two other little things they have is lodge sells these and i think there's a couple other but it's they call it chain mail kind of see how it's like the old chain mail and it has a rubber piece in it and that will scratch around and clean up and you can get a bigger kind of a steel wool thing to get the real crunky stuff off but most of the time all you gotta do is take a, a wet rag just go around it wipe it off rinse it off and take a, a dry towel just dry that excess water off the hole outside set it back over on your stove get it towards back to a little bit of a warmness just put a very very light uh, oil on it and just wipe it down let it set come back and just dry that and it'll be ready to go that pan there the first time that I did it when I got it found it and bought it I did the same thing I did there I took it all back down to bare metal put four coats on it the very next morning cooked eggs in them slid right off and the smoother you get it and you get that black sheen the more it's going to be non non sticky the uh one of the things that me and my wife the reason we love using the uh cast iron is so much better for you um we've both tried all the so-called non-stick ones you can buy the last ones we bought was the copper style and they work for a while but You'll see the commercials and they say, you know, won't scratch off, won't do this. You can eat it with a, a spoon. You can hit it with a mixer blender. Guarantee, though, after a short while, it's going to start coming flaking off. And as soon as it starts flaking off, you're going to stick really bad. We cook out of cast iron pans. They're skillets. Uh, we've got a big flat skillet. I've got a griddle that I use. I've got a big two-foot griddle that I use on the, out on the pellet stove. We have a wok. We've got a Dutch oven. You can get several different sizes of Dutch ovens. And uh, we won't cook with anything else. You can look up on the internet and they'll tell you all the benefits because it's, it's, it's made out of iron, made out of natural minerals, and that actually puts the little minerals back in as your body needs to. Thanks for coming with me while I did this seasoning on the cast iron. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. And I pray you have a good weekend. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.